Here they are. If Whoa. you see, these are like crickets. And he ate them all. I'm gonna eat a bunch of them. Okay, so today we finished up our meeting. CTS was nice enough to drive us to the train station. We're going to go back to Shanghai. Once we get to Shanghai, the axle manufacturer is going to be meeting us. We're going to be going out for a dinner, get to know each other. Looking forward to it. Really looking forward to the train ride too. Never thought I'd say that about public transit, but I cannot wait to take this journey. So we just arrived with our axle manufacturer and they're taking us out to dinner. We're the first ones here, but I want to show you guys this. So the, the eating is very communal. The dishes circle the table on the Lazy Susan and it's a beautiful room. And another thing I want to point out is we're in a city of 30 million people and the city is laid out beautiful, like amazing. And the vegetation, if you can see the amount of trees in behind, between every building, the whole city is done like this. I've never been to a greener, more beautiful city. Okay, so right now we traveled by train up to Nanjing. We are in the inverter factory. This is the factory that makes the, basically all the stuff that takes the DC to AC, switches it back and forth, controls the voltage for air compressors, power steering pumps, batteries, chargers, electric motors. These are the boxes where all the power flows through. Uh, right here, they've actually set up this entire test bench that shows all the parts of the electric vehicle, how they go together, how they work. Actually, this is just a really cool display. They brought all the wires up, put everything there. You can see air compressor, AC compressor, vehicle control unit, BMS, battery management unit. That's what you're familiar with. We just put under the cab autopsy and replaced. This is the power steering pump here. This is the low voltage supply control unit. That's what you see in the back of the cab for topsy. Here we have the motor control unit, MCU. Uh, control units, these are all put into those Danfoss controllers. And an auxiliary uh, power unit. This is a four in one. If you guys remember, we just replaced the three in one to upgrade the voltage a little bit so we could run the generator a little bit more. But this basically takes one voltage in and then it splits it out into the different voltages you need. This is what we are here to have a look at. Check, inspect. It basically, it takes the power from the generator, sends it over to power steering, air compressor. All your auxiliary power units that you see on this table are run by the three in one. One in, three out. This is one in, four out. So we're gonna have a talk about three in one, four in one, five in one. Ten they were in, telling us to even do up to 10 in ten one. 10 in ones, yeah. Which, uh, really, really cool technology here. This is cool. This is an uh, automated bus, just basically a self-driving bus. But I think it's a, what the future of self-driving should be when it comes to even just passengers, like one you own. Like if it's self-driving, why does it have to be like a car? I want something like this. Can you imagine you, you got the family over, you got one bench on that side, you can sit on this side, you have a conversation, maybe a little tray, a little meal, have some tea, some coffee. This is what self-driving interiors should be like for vehicles. Like why all sit in a row like a car? Make it a living room on wheels. So we're pretty lucky and never actually been able to open up these boxes. When we receive them, they essentially come closed and sealed and tested for that. But come take a look at this, it's pretty impressive. Um, so this is not only one inverter, but a three in one. What it's able to do is take high voltage power coming in from the batteries and to power our power steering pump, air compressor, as well as our batteries. This was really important for us because on our first version of Topsy, we needed two boxes. We needed to have one for the air compressor and power steering pump and a completely separate one for our low voltage batteries. But now we can power our low voltage system off of its strict connector. And this makes it so much more streamlined. And what's neat about this factory is we're meeting like with that. them today to explore how we can cram even more function into a single box. So it's really cool to be here and to see their workmanship out of the box. Really cool stuff. 
And you know, these are really important parts in an electric vehicle. Every single connection point has a safety break in it, and it's all controlled by these computers. And as you can see, there's a lot of fuses involved in a three-phase application. So we know that our compressors are always going to be protected. We don't need to have extra fuses on our air compressors or our power steering pump. Oh, nice. yeah. Right now we're going to be going over to the testing center, so we just seen the 3-in-1s. What I liked is that basically all the parts in these boxes are off-the-shelf parts. If you actually look inside, a lot of these are things that you could find in a part store. So if you blow out contactors or fuses, you can locate it, open the lid of the box, service it, replace it. It's not just a sealed box that you can't touch. These are serviceable components with parts that you can find. So right now we're in the salt spray room. It's basically just a big tub of salt water that they can dump in to make sure that no salt or water gets in and then high pressure spray. So you take those three in one inverters, you put them into here, you hook them up and you just pump as much salt and bathe them in salt water, leave it in there for a few days and see how it does. So it's really cool to actually see that they're doing the testing on this. Behind me is the motor calibration room. This is where they're testing all the electric motors. So behind me are rows and rows of trucks that are being pre-packaged. These are all going off to India. They're fully electric vehicles, but to get around the tariffs, they basically pre-build them all here, ship them over to India, and then they get all dressed up with their cabs and rigging and box and body. But it's basically an entire pre-built chassis, all wired, all tested, ready to go. And they are clearly making a lot of dump trucks. Yeah. We can see them all outside lined up. This right here is a swappable battery pack. So they just swap these batteries out. Cause I mean, we all know that dump trucks need to go through like 12, 14 hour days of operation, almost 24 hours. So what they do is on site, they literally just pick this battery pack up, drop another one off, send it off for charging. Test driving the electric dump truck. So this one has a transmission then. is this truck has a gearbox you'll see why we went away from the gearbox on this thing so okay. see this thing shift yeah that's annoying yeah, it's got the drive line so you feel the electric drive line vibration yeah yeah so what are your thoughts honestly i don't like the drive line no the I... drive line you can hear that drive shaft yeah. you hear all the u joints same problem with carl our first one you hear heard every vibration and noise and things you would normally never hear in a drive line. Right, because it's hitting the head by the end. And I thought it was car, but like you can hear this. Like it's a brand new truck and you hear that little, you hear the gears come in like between acceleration, yeah. deceleration, you hear the gears mesh, the U joints come in. The regen's nice, although it's it's still limited. I can see the needle's only moving a little bit. Okay. You see that just coming, the difference between coming on and off? Yeah, yeah. So people will say, why don't you keep the drive line? Can you imagine driving that? That would drive you nuts after a little while. Yeah. The torque, the acceleration, definitely better with the electric axles. How mad do you think they'd be if we took it through the pond and up the hill? <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't piss off our supplier. No, <laughs> no, they haven't given us a price yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, with that noise, that vibration we felt, that is exactly why on Carl we got rid of the drive line. Like, Carl, that was one of the issues, one of the few issues uh, that we had, is that with the drive line, you constantly had a vibration. It was, once you got it up to 50, 60, I don't even know if it was a vibration that you have in a normal truck or the fact that you don't have the diesel that you would hear it but you heard every u-joint everything that rattles and like the drive line is physically solid like on this truck so it's not like we've got a loose drive line 
it's a heck of an angle for the steady bearing. But I don't think this, <laughs> I don't think that would cause that noise. All right, so we just finished up the tour of the factories. They showed us how the three-in-ones were made, the inverters, all the parts that they have that access, and then they gave us a little tour of their production. We got to see them assembling. They're working on buses right now, so they showed us our entire bus facility from putting the frame in, the axles, finished products, painting. We got to go to a test truck. All in all, this is an absolutely fantastic visit. We learned a lot, and it was great to just kind of meet our suppliers, some of the parts, and see their production. If you enjoyed our Edison Motors video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that notification bell for more updates and follow us on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram.